do you know this fish? Nah, are you sure you didn't encounter it while swimming in the ocean last summer? Look carefully. Does it ring a bell with you now? If it still needs to be, there's no need to rush into meeting this fish known as a wrasse. You heard it right. Today's video will discuss the incredible saltwater fish called a wrasse. But what exactly is this fish? Some of the most eye-catching and well-liked fish species in the marine hobby belong to the wrasse family Labradae. Most of the wrasse species are found on the coral reefs of the Indo-Pacific, although they may be found in the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans as well. Wrasse fish often live in coral reef habitats. However, the precise type of reef will vary depending on region. Some of these wrasses are considered entirely reef safe, whereas others are considered to be either partially or not. Wrasses are not only interesting because of their magnificent colors and features, but what makes them fascinating is their sexes. Protogenous hermaphrodites make up the majority of wrasses. Accordingly, most of these fish are born as females with the capacity to transform into males later in reaction to changes in their internal environments or other factors. Divine transformation indeed. This one-of-a-kind trait aids these fish when environmental factors that affect reproduction, such as a lack of partners or resources, are present. However, fish seldom need to switch sexes since the environment in the aquarium is often constant. Now, if this intrigues you a lot, sit back and lend your ear to me because it's time for you to meet the 15 types of wrasses that are reef safe and magnificent. Before we start with the list, it would be an honor if you gave this video a thumbs up and smash the subscribe button for your regular dose of information on the fish keeping hobby. If you're ready, there's a little something you should first know. It's ideal for adding at least one wrasse to your tank. The issue is that some wrasse species require particular setups or diets, and a keeper's skill level will determine success. And because we care about you, we have divided wrasses into totally reef safe and moderately reef safe categories to make it easier for you to distinguish between the top 15 wrasses for saltwater aquariums. And to not make you wait any longer, let's jump into our first fully reef safe wrasse. Meet the fantastic Blue Striped Tamarin. The Blue Striped Tamarin is one of the most expensive and difficult wrasse species to catch. These enormous fish change from yellow to royal blue from their head to their tail. They get their name by having even more horizontal electric blue stripes all over their bodies. The Pacific Ocean's Melanesia area is where Blue Striped Tamarins are harvested from particular sites. In tiny groups, they eat coral reefs there. They are often entirely reef safe in the aquarium. Fiery like its name, our second wrasse is called Flame. The Flame wrasse, also known as Jordan's Fairy wrasse, is a gorgeous red and yellow fish with long feathery fins. These fish, which feed on zooplankton and other waterborne invertebrates, are native to the tropical seas around the Hawaiian Islands. Despite having more particular nutritional requirements than other wrasses, they get along with corals and invertebrates. The third wrasse will surely give you a magical aquarium. Meet the Scots Fairy Wrasse. The Scots Fairy Wrasse has a silky green body that transforms into blue and red as they go through the color spectrum. However, the color variation varies according to where they are most often found, Australia, Tonga, and Fiji. The dorsal fin may be yellow with a darker edge, while the caudal fin is generally red. These wrasses are typically found on the periphery of the reef, so your fish may benefit from having more room to swim. Fourth on our list is the red-headed Solon Fairy. This orangey red head that sits at the end of its light blue body with a cream underside gives the red-headed Solon Fairy Ras its name, which is fitting. Despite the two distinct species, this Indonesian species is occasionally confused with the blue-sided Ras due to visual similarities. They inhabit somewhat deeper waters and don't peck at corals or other invertebrates. This next wrasse, the yellow-banded possum, can get your attention without a potion. Although most fish survive on frozen diets, they mostly eat live coke pods. However, they have a rather specific diet and are sensitive to parameter changes. The stripes that contrast with the red body of this type of wrasse give them their name. Given that they frequently hide in rocks or cruise for food, yellow-banded possums are said to be cryptic and picky. McCosker's Flasher is our sixth wrasse. A stunning fish with an orange and scarlet body and electric blue accents is the McCosker's Flasher wrasse. 
These fish are tough and energetic, yet they like staying at the bottom of the tank. Did you know that the McCosker's wrasse is one of the most common species to breed? Because it is highly likely to get along with other wrasses, especially numerous females? You heard it right! It's also good to note that these fish often avoid tiny invertebrates and corals, but there's always a potential that they'll consume any worms or snails they'll come across. I'm on top of the world, looking down on creation, like these magnificent carpenter's wrasses. These fish, which have vivid red and yellow hues, thrive even better when housed in groups, which may bring a ton of color and movement to the aquarium. Adding females first, then a lone male is strongly advised. These wrasses don't pick at invertebrates or corals, making them quite excellent aquarium residents. Eighth on our list is the filamented flasher. The sequence of addition is less crucial for the filamented flasher wrasse, also known as the whip fin fairy wrasse, which also does well in a group of females. These wrasses rarely pick at corals and invertebrates, so that they can be kept in most setups. Interestingly, these fish have been found to crossbreed with other species in the wild. Thus, it's typically advised against keeping closely related species in the same tank. Now, fish keepers, the remaining list of wrasses we're going to talk about are partially reef safe. These species of wrass should be anticipated to prey on smaller invertebrates and corals. They may act appropriately in your tank, but remember, you should be cautious. Let's continue with our remaining seven partially reef safe wrasses. Meet the bright looking wrasse named Yellow Chorus. Due to its vivid, consistent yellow coloring, the yellow chorus wrasse, sometimes referred to as the golden rainbow fish or canary wrasse, is a popular fish. The yellow wrasse tends to live in wrasse colonies and is a relatively resilient fish. They will protect corals from harm, but they cannot tell healthy invertebrates from bad, which makes them categorized as partially reef safe wrasse. Our 10th wrasse has an incredible name called Melanorus. Pohavens and Tailspot are two names for the Melanorus wrasse. The horizontal blue stripes along the length of the yellow-blue body of this fish are incredibly mesmerizing. Near Australia, Fiji, and Indonesia, shallow reefs are home to this species of wrasse. In the aquarium, they often leave corals alone, but shouldn't be trusted with tiny worms and snails since they graze on small invertebrates. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas because our next wrasse can give literal Christmas colors in your tank. This spectacular Fijian fish's red and green color variations inspired its name. The Christmas wrasse, also known as Claudia's wrasse, is a simple and attractive type to add to the reef aquarium. In addition, they are among the less costly species. Like the other Halicoera species, Christmas wrasses consume smaller invertebrates. Going to our 12th wrasse is the Red Line. The Red Line wrasse resembles the Christmas wrasse in both size and color. These fish are much smaller and come from more western waters around the Philippines and Japan, but they have a much darker base, green hue with burned orange markings instead of red. Usually in more open water, these fish are located along the reef's edges. Red Line wrasse won't consume corals, but they will undoubtedly pick at the invertebrates that they discover between the rocks. Check out Sixth Line as our 13th wrasse in this video. Due to its size, level of activity, and appealing look, the Sixth Line wrasse is one of the most well-known species in the hobby of aquarium keeping. The horizontal orange stripes on these wrasses, bluish purple in hue, lead into their green tail fins. Even though they are tiny, these fish are pretty active, aggressive towards other wrasses, and less likely to consume any larger invertebrates in your aquarium. Although Six Line is the ideal species for a compact display, their active lifestyle necessitates a sizable tank with a huge swimming area and elaborate rockwork. Going 14th on our list of partially reef safe wrasse is the Eight Line. Because of its softer yellow and pink coloring and greater size, the Eight Line wrasse is marginally less common. This two inch differential also enables the Eight Line wrasse to consume more invertebrates than the Six Line putting more giant worms, snails, and urchins in danger. Just bear in mind that this fish may be hostile in your tank. Last but surely not least on our list is the small tail pencil. In the aquarium hobby, small tailed pencil wrasses are hard to find, 
They're a relatively new addition, and only some of their personalities and habits have been thoroughly characterized. We may infer from how species in this genus interact with the reef that they are only partially reef safe. The name of this wrasse species refers to its short caudal fin and narrow body. Apart from that, they are primarily red with a distinctive yellow eye. They form a complex with other species of the Pseudocalinus genus, but are only found in the tropical seas of Hawaii. You're interested to adding wrasse to your saltwater tank, huh? If yes, that's good to know. However, you might also be interested to know the three common types of wrasses you should avoid adding. First, it's not a real bird, but it's called a bird wrasse. The bird wrasse is a stunning and lively fish. However, it becomes enormous. It is not reef safe, since it will happily devour any invertebrates it can get its hands on, and any fish that'll fit in its mouth. These are ideal for fish-only systems in live rock. Although challenging, the bird wrasse is not a fish that belongs in a reef aquarium. Second is the dragon wrasse. It's remarkable to locate a dragon wrasse at a neighborhood fish market. Usually, you only see them at their early stage, when they have a distinctive fin on their head that resembles a mohawk. In addition, they disturb the corals by rearranging the rocks in the tank and moving the corals. And lastly is the leopard wrasse. The leopard wrasse is an attractive fish that is reef safe. However, they often fare poorly in captivity. They are famously hard to establish in an aquarium. Due to their poor ability to acquire fish food, many people usually have them end up dying. And they frequently die during shipping because they have an oral injury. Alas, I have finally introduced you to the 15 great wrasses you can think of adding to your saltwater tank in the future. You should be aware that wrasses are often communal fish. If you're concerned that these fish pose a hazard to others, while certain species are timider than others, they aren't typically recognized for taking the lead in the tank as the bully. But obviously, this depends totally on the wrasses' unique nature. Wrasses are busy fish, always looking for food within and outside the rocks. Some wrasse species have particular feeding requirements, including live coat pods and various frozen meals. This might make it harder to feed some of the more experienced wrasses. These marine fish are known for having internal and external parasites like flukes. And since they probably have internal or external parasites, you should always quarantine your wrasses before putting them in your aquarium. That's all for this video, fish keepers. But if you still want to dig deeper into these wrasses, you can visit our website at AquariumStoreDepot.com, where tons of blog posts about different fish are posted including the types, requirements, and temperaments of wrasses as your next potential tank fish. Have some questions in mind? Drop it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, fish keepers. Till our next topic.